now I have this table for which each taxon, each, each unique combination of species with the associated upper categories is identified by one single number. And then I can add the amount of information I want. I want a, a field that is endemic. It can be a text. Endangered. Text. So when you create this list from the set of names in the occurrence. Uh-huh, yes, yes. Now I, I put. So if, if there's any garbage in there. Could be, could be. So, so essentially we have to clean this. Yes. And that takes you sitting down and going through. Uh -huh. I'm, uh, yes, I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just looking at the, at the, at the, at the methodology, the, the marketing. Okay, endemic. I mean, this this is how we decide about endemic species in Africa. <laughs> this is how we did it. In <laughs> okay. Now I have to join. I have to join my two tables, right? Because now I have information in the authority file that is not contained in the main table. And I have extra information in the main table that I don't want to be there anymore. The mammals. No. Uh. Okay. Let's see. Table. Now, what I, what I will do is go to the tools of the database and add the tables. This menu allows us to connect fields. I did taxon, no, no, no. I, I, I haven't created I just want to show you that if you connect to the fields, we can, we, we, can, we can obtain data from different tables. Here, the fields that are key for, um, for the communication of these two tables are species. And say, this is a relationship, right? So I created a relationship that will be kept in every query I do of, the, of, of my data, of Benin. Let's make a query so I can show you. Now I want to make a query involving two, two sets of data, two tables. The, author the authority file and the main table. And I want to have listed the species from this table and the endemic status of from this table when the endemic status is one. And I want latitude longitude data that are kept in this table. You see, what I have now is a query that only involves the endemic mammals. But I, I didn't say anything about the lat long data. I go to the design of my query, and I'll put is my criteria is I want only endemic mammals, and I want also that all the all the all the data I have do not contain no data. See? So this is a query I can work with and export to the GIS and, and see if I have, some, I have difference between species richness and richness of endemics very easily. 
นะโอเคโอเคเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าน์ดิสคอเวอร์ดิสิเครตส์ของเดอะอัลเดอร์จีไอเอสอะไรคำถามว่าคุณคิดว่ามันง่ายโอเค so my turn to suffer here's what I've got and in honor of Caleb who left for this uh, there's Ghana and there are all the bird records from Ghana okay and what I want I'm going to show you the end of this oh. <laughs> sorry about that Let me turn on mirroring. Was anybody going to tell me that you couldn't see what I was talking about? <laughs> so there's Ghana and all the bird records. Okay, and as Adolfo just told you, you could have filtered this for endemics. You could have whatever. So uh, what I, what I'm wanting to do is count the number of species in each of A grid. There's my grid. Okay. And what I want to get, this is kind of where I'm headed at the end, is this. Okay. That's what I wanted. A map of species richness. Look at that. He's happy now. So I suffered a little bit with this. I'll tell you the points where I suffered, but the fun thing is, unlike with ArcGIS, where there have been times where I've worked for two weeks, haven't solved the problem, and couldn't. On QGIS, you jump into Google and you put QGIS. How do I do this? And it, you get the answer. So here's what I did. Okay, that, that's the end point. Here's what I did. First thing is I needed to create my grid. In fact, I'll do it at a different resolution right now. Adolfo, are there four numbers? Adolfo, are there four numbers written over there on a piece of paper? Yes. Hold on a second. Okay, analysis tools, research tools. I wanted this vector grid. The grid extent. I want it to key to the outline of Ghana. Um, what's Adolfo? What's the left-hand number of the four? Minus four. Okay. What's the lower number of the four? Four. Four. Right hand. Two. And top. Twelve. Twelve. Thank you. And. <laughs> And I think I did that one at half a degree, so let's do this one at a third of a degree, just for fun. And I pick output grid as polygons. Okay. So I'm going to call everything I do right now 2GH. Okay, and this is going to be my grid. And yes, I want it. There it is. So just so you see the difference, there's my original. Here's my new one. Okay, so the first one was half degree, and this one is third of a degree. There's the country outline on top of it. Now I've already imported my occurrence data. Okay, yes. Oh, that's just the minimum latitude and mi maximum latitude and minimum longitude and maximum longitude of the country. Say again. Yeah, probably best to to listen and then we'll go back through the steps. So what did I do? I found an outline of the area that I wanted. And on that piece of paper over there, I noted down its minimum and maximum latitude and longitude. o 
Okay? This is what I've been doing all the time Adolfo's been talking. Uh, How today is your work on checking your Facebook? Oh, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> so then I needed to create this grid. Okay? Some sort of spatial generalization. And so I, uh, I did what you just saw me do. I gave it the limits and I gave it the cell size. Okay? And so within that, set, that region, it determines the cell size. A slight little irritation is you'd think it'd be able to get the limits from the, the shape file that I specified. It couldn't. So that hung me up for a bit. Okay? So now I have my grid. Everybody with me? Now what I want to do is notice that for each of these bird records, of course I have the species, right? I distilled the, the table that I got from GBIF down to just three, three columns. Species, latitude, longitude. So now what I need to do is get these um, these point records assigned to a particular grid square. And so I used a plugin called Point Sampling Tool. So if you don't have that, you go to Fetch Python Plugins, it loads up a catalog. And you go down, it helps to put it in order. Point sampling tool. You see, I have it installed. But you would just highlight it and put install, please. Okay? So that gives me here in plugins analysis point sampling tool. So the layer containing the points is gonna birds. Huh? Yeah, that's that's why listen to me first. Okay? So I wasted about fifteen minutes because I thought, okay, I'm going to find the key field, and the key field is this two gonna grid ID. But what I didn't realize is that I could, that, that that's the only field I'm going to get in my output. Okay? So that really cost me a bit of time. And what I really wanted was species as well. Okay? So now I'm in my output, I'm going to get the grid ID and species. Okay? So I kind of didn't know that I could choose more than one field. And so I'm going to call this 2GH uh, occurrences. Okay. My, my mail is coming up whether I want it to or not. So it's going through. It's bombing. But it's a couple of thousand points, so it would make sense. There we go. It's asking me about the coordinate reference system. There we go. And now I have that data set. So what do I have? In my original data set of occurrences, I had species latitude, longitude. But now in this new one, I should have species and grid ID. That's the ID of my, my network grid, right? So now, now what do I want to do? Remember, I could have two points that fell within a grid square, two points that have the same species, right? So I've got a problem in dealing with this table. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I couldn't find a way to do this in QGIS. So I did the next best thing. I cheated. 
Okay, I'm going to, yeah. invert the selection so it selects everything then I'm going to copy it to my clipboard I'm going out to Excel new workbook and I'm going to paste it I don't care about this first column Let's see. okay now I have species and I have ID numbers. But again, I can very easily have two lat long combinations that have the same species and fall in one grid square. So I'm going to take the whole thing, I'm gonna to go to data, advanced filter, and you can get this unique records open. <coughs> okay, boom. So it just reduced. And you can see it, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 14, 15, 25, right? So I want to copy that and I want to put it over here in a second worksheet. So now I have the list of species per grid cell. Right? And so in some grid cells I might have a hundred names. In fact, let me sort this by grid cell just to show you. 